Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and the Warriors lost a painful one to the Washington Wizards. That was a tough one to lose. It's been a while, but I was actually yelling at my TV. You know, Wiggins missed a couple free throws. Then Wiggins fouled Beal on that three-pointer, gave him a four-point play. And when Damian Lee inexplicably, for some reason, got spooked by the rookie, Denny Avdija. Avdija? And... Could have gone up, probably wouldn't have been able to make that shot. If not, probably could have gotten fouled, but instead got spooked and tried to dish it and basically turned the ball over and handed the game to the Wizards on a platter. I was like in a bad mood, but that's a good thing because I've said that the Warriors should just avoid blowouts. If they lose, that's all right. If they fight and they lose, that's all right. I mean, it sucks that the Wizards are not a good team and they lost, you know, like that, that's kind of lame, but I'm trying to stay positive and let's just call this a good loss, right? Bottom line is the most important thing for the rest of the season is that they finish it somehow, some way with a vibe on an upward swing, whether that's making the playoffs, whether that's making just the play in round. Or if it's just seeing some positive development, like real positive development for next season, instead of just saying like, oh, wow, we we are the same team we were back at the end of January. Obviously, the most important thing is that James Wiseman makes progress so they know what they have, just so that they can feel they made the right choice that James Wiseman is turning into a player. And he looked good against the Wizards. He had some problems guarding Robin Lopez in the post. And I'll be honest, I had no idea Robin Lopez had decent moves under the basket. But Wiseman looked like a guy who was supposed to be there instead of a guy who was just making mistakes, all these hiccups, whatever. So he looked good. He looked confident. Again, he showed nice touch outside of his lobs. He hit a nice floater. He hit a jumper. And his hands, I've always said... I don't think his hands are bad. He doesn't have Festus Azili hands. He doesn't have Damian Jones hands. His hands are not made out of stone. But the game was just a little too fast for him. So maybe this is a sign that it's slowing down. And maybe this is a sign that his mind is starting to chill out. He was walking out there with confidence. And you could see him as a guy. Like you can just imagine him next year as a guy who's solid, not somebody that like people are like, oh man, he's out there and he's going to do this and he's going to mess up, blah, blah, blah. He'll get there. You know, he may not be an all-star next season, but he will be somebody you can definitely, definitely count on. There will be mistakes, but he's not going to be the flaw on the team. Trust me, like all these fans who are blurting out that the Warriors should trade him, they will be deleting their old tweets. Again, a loss inherently is never a good thing. They're still in the 10th spot, but the Pelicans are right behind them. And they're trying to make the playoffs, trying to get to the play-in round. But I will say that a loss to the Washington Wizards isn't a complete waste. The Wizards are one of the worst teams in the league. And by the Wizards winning and the Minnesota Timberwolves losing, that increases the buffer in terms of the Wizards finishing in last place. There's other teams that are closer to last place than the Wizards, but they all season have definitely been one that could threaten. And as we all know, if the Wolves finish in last place, the pick is guaranteed to be one through five, right? So the further up the rankings they go, but if they finish like second to last place, then they're guaranteed one through six, If they finish in third to last place, it's guaranteed one through seven. And this is a five dude draft. So again, we want the Wolves to finish last. That makes sense. And in terms of the Warriors own pick, they're not trying to tank, but in effect, a loss improves their lottery standings. Again, I'm not advocating tanking. I don't want them to actively tank, but overall, Taking a step back after I cooled off after the ending of this game, I was like, all right, that's not so bad long term. 
But one last thing on Damian Lee. I like Damian Lee, but man, that play at the end, that was like, I, I don't even know what he was thinking. And honestly, like in recent episodes, we've looked at this Warriors roster and you see that their roster, their bench, is just not good enough. And somebody like Damian Lee, he's more of like a ninth or 10th man. They need to improve on that for sure. Anyway, that's a whole nother episode. And that is something to be addressed as we go and further into the off season. Quick turnaround, the Warriors get the Houston Rockets on Saturday. And again, that's a game that they should win. Should. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that is another quick hitter episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Warrior fan friends. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. Go Dubs.